Six years ago, I moved to New York City to follow my dreams and become a fashion photographer. I had no idea what was to come and I could not have imagined the road that would be ahead of me. Well, it started out as being like a crazy start to the year, super packed month, ended up being like the slowest month ever. And you start doubting yourself, your skills. And I put so much more energy into those moments and to the moments that I need to celebrate myself and the victories. But I thought it'd be a good time to make this video, tell you guys a little bit of the story on the beginning of the new year that I'm celebrating, you know, my sixth year in New York. It was a crazy time. I moved here two weeks after my grandpa passed away. I was studying at FAU at the time. It was my first semester doing art ever. I had already dropped out once before at this point. And I was like, yo, this, like this isn't it. I was thoroughly enjoying taking art, but the way the requisites were set up, I wasn't gonna be able to take photography until like three, year, until three years later on. At the time, it was between LA or New York, the classic path you take, one or the other. Somebody sent me that this agency in New York was looking for an intern. And I, I hit them up. So they were like, can you, it's in person, you need to interview in person. And I was like, don't worry about it, I'm there. During this time, I was really trying to go every other weekend to New York or so, at least once a month, and make the money back slowly by meeting more people, you know, doing little shoots. And if I didn't meet, you know, paying off the trip, um, by the end of that trip, then I would, I couldn't do the next trip. So basically, it was the end of the semester. I, I, I left again, I moved to New York. The day after I got here, I started interning at a modeling agency. This was a whole new world to me, as you can imagine. Like, I'm from Florida, from the Broward area. I'm from the South Florida region. Like, I'm not, uh, there's not a big fashion scene there. Working in a space as such, it's not just about, you know, getting good at photography. It's about learning the walk, learning the talk, learning everything. It's like, it's like, it's, it's just learning, learning how to be a part of it. And all of this was new to me. All this was foreign to me. I didn't know what the brands were. I used to think Fenty and Fendi were the same thing. You know, ridiculous things like this, but you know, they sound ridiculous now, but they weren't at the time. The beginning, it started out doing you know, what you would expect an intern to do. Basic things that really just are, 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 are intern tasks. But from the beginning that I got there, I had very much in, like, embedded in my mind, like, you know, you'll, I'll let you use me, but I'm gonna use you back. I'm gonna go in there and like, you can, you know, you can, I'll, I'll let you use me, but I'm gonna take what I'm here for. You know what I'm saying? Like in the moment that I feel like I've taken everything I can take from this opportunity, this situation, and I'm ready to move on and that's it. I'm not gonna stay here longer. Before I left Florida, they told me this was a three month internship. And I told my mom before leaving, I was like, dude, like, I'm not coming back until, you know, I have something to show for myself until I've done something. And in her mind, I was really just leaving for three months. But, you know, that wasn't the case. And knowing myself, you know, when I said it, I meant it. And that was it. And eventually, the agents started to see my work as a photographer. And then they allowed me to start doing other stuff that wasn't, you know, just interny and they started paying me a little bit more. It was still foolish if I told you. Well, I mean, as you can imagine, the internship was unpaid. It was $20 stipend a day, but I had to do what I had to do, you feel me? And you may ask, well, how are you affording that? I always had a saying, I'm like, dude, like, if there's no seat for me, like, I'm gonna break through and make a seat, a seat for me. And basically, you know, how I was how I was doing it was I was saving all the money that I was getting from the stipend. The first week I remember also that I got here, um, <laughs> I like replied to some random Craigslist thing and I ended up being an extra on Love and Hip Hop. I think that was like the fourth day that I was here. And I was staying, dude, literally everywhere from Brownsville to South Mott in the Bronx to Elmhurst in Queens, everywhere in the city. Um, literally anywhere that I could stay, 
I stayed. There were some days where after work, I didn't know where I was gonna stay that night, so I had to go to, that's what, so I had to go to, to Barnes and Nobles near Union Square and just sit there finding out where I was gonna sleep. And you know, I wouldn't recommend this, especially to like a young woman or any, I mean, I, I mean, I would recommend it to like people who can like do it because it's like character building and definitely like, you know, like I said, like this is part of the part of the experience, part of the journey. You can appreciate it so much more by going through all the steps of the real life star starving artist. But some of the amazing things that came out of that was, you know, I made one of my closest friends, this dude from Paris, who basically I had just met and I ended up staying with him. With him, it was a trip because I was like, I mean, I was sleeping with like rolled up shirts under my head, you know. I was getting like jock itch and, and athlete's foot like all the time in the summers, dude, because I was like drying myself with like old clothes, towels. You know, some of the windows weren't closing in the winter storms in some situations. You know, everything you can think of, dude, and stories that I'm not even gonna tell. I have a ton of crazy stories, but like for the sake of the length of this video, just getting to the point. If y'all want crazy stories, I have them. Right when I was leaving at the fifth month, I stayed for like five months, Winnie Harlow's team found me on social media and they were looking for a photographer to shoot her for the Met Gala, which was coming up. And they had already booked somebody, but they got rid of that person. They were like, nah, we want this dude. It was supposed to be a one-time thing. I had no idea who she was, and I had no idea what the Met Gala was. But I was on my yes man, you feel me? And I was like, yes man. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, I'm down for whatever. So I did the Met Gala thing, and it was incredible because that was the first time that I had, I had my photos go viral and, and be seen by a large audience. Because it went well, I ended up you know, shooting another thing and another thing and another thing. And I ended up working with them for a prolonged period of time. And during this whole time, I was also assisting a really great photographer called Mike Ruiz. You may have be familiar with his work. He's like an old, old timer, but he's really great, he's fantastic. I was really a terrible assistant, so I don't even know why he would call me in. I think maybe he just saw the potential as a photographer. I'm a great photographer, but as an assistant, you know, I'm gonna say it. I'm not that great, dude. And this is all going on, and I'm still working with Winnie. And basically, it led to the, the grand climax of that, which was shooting my breakthrough job that legitimized me. Um, it was really insane because also at the time I was, dude, I was 22 when this came out. You know, I was brand new to the city. I was fresh. I had only been here for not that long a time. When this whole when this whole Mac campaign came out, you know, I, I I loved working with Winnie and there was a lot of things I appreciate. But there were also things that, you know, for example, when it came out and it was on basically she was like, Yeah, my team hired a photographer and booked the studio and da 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 da, da right? And I'm like, bro, like it was just petty because it's like, dude, like I've been working on it for like a year at that point. I'm like, I'm not just a photographer. As a matter of fact, when it came to the studio, they definitely didn't book it because I remember them telling me to find one. I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do since originally there wasn't any budget from the team for this project. Like I said, Mac, when they bought it out, they paid, but originally there wasn't budget from the team and they wanted me to go find a studio. I'm not sure how they <laughs> they expected me to do that without a budget, especially being one year in the city. Uh, but basically, I had to go like, like really beg this one friend that I had met who had a studio um, if he let me use it, and he like came through and you know allowed us to use his space. Originally, it was like for Hall her Halloween costume. It wasn't for Mac. It was for her. And basically, like Mac ended up buying it out, and which was like. That doesn't happen often, dude. It was like crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like unexpected. I was like, super excited, I was super proud, but like, you know, that did hit a soft spot. That did, that did hit a sore spot when she said that. I don't know, dog, if you're gonna start, if you're gonna work with people who are starting out to save money and you know, yeah, sure, give up other opportunities, I always appreciated that, but you're gonna start working with people who are starting out who don't know all the ropes and don't know all the intricacies and all this stuff, then maybe communicate if something is, if, is taken away or whatever or wrong, or you don't, I don't know, whatever it is instead of just like, I don't know, you know, moving like that. But for example, when it came out, you know, I was super stoked. It was on all the billboards, on all the buses. It was on everywhere you can imagine, dude. This is my first job, my first real, really real client. And it was everywhere. I didn't even know how to handle it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even know what was going on. And it was everywhere, dude, everywhere. All the Vogue's, everything. Um, it was in print, American Vogue, everything you can think of, dude. It just hit the ground running when I got here. At the time, I was also um, preparing my first annual charity showcase for Scoliosis Foundation Ghana. 
Now, if y'all don't know, I, I have scoliosis. Um, it was like hard for me to grow up with, I had to wear a back brace and stuff. And it's always been a dream to kind of be like, you know, somebody that kids can look up to and be like, oh, he did it, you know, lit, I can, you know, he, and I can do it, you know, I can make it through whatever or whatever it is, you know. It was always my goal to do something regarding that. So I had my first ever show where I, I showed my work. I invited everybody, it was like a real success. But it took a big toll on me because I, I, I was like, you know, sleeping sleepless nights. I was new here, you know, I was able to get an article on the cut about it. It was it was a big deal. And I was really proud of myself, but I was like, dude, this, this took a toll on me. It took a toll on me mentally. And the only way I was able to do it at the time was because I wasn't working as much or getting as many clients. Because if I would have been busy, like nowadays, it, it, I would not have been as easy, dude. And I did it basically all myself. Telling the stories like chapters, right? Like. The year that would follow after that, like, I mean, I guess the year that was, that had started into, like, that, that had started into was insane. I went through a crazy breakup and, yeah, it was my fault. Like, you know, I was young, there was a lot of things going on. I was, like, dealing with a lot of, like, the, the, the kind of, like, overflow of what I had just gone through, like, that whole year. Like I was having a lot more chronic pain because I just had no idea of how to how to have wellness or I had no money to do wellness. You know, now I do acupuncture, massage, all these things, but like I was just like not well, you know what I'm saying? Like totally put together. And basically I had this breakup, but it was like, a, it was terrible for me, but it was great for me at the same time because it really was what transformed me. Um, like I went from like, you know, I, I completely like became a different person, like mentally, emotionally, like, physically everything in between. I came up with this phrase, it was like boss up or loss up, where it was basically like, you know, you boss up, you know, and you, you, you turn any opportunity into a W by flipping that L around into a W and turning into a lesson that you get better from, or you take the L. So it's only one, op one, one option here, you know, to boss up or loss up. And I completely lost a ton of weight. I had gained the weight, I lost a ton of weight, and mentally I was feeling better than ever, physically I was feeling better than ever, I was like ripped, I was feeling great. Um, I started doing a ton of work because I was focusing, hunkering down. I started getting hit up for like modeling opportunities, like like stuff that I thought was like calling me in for meetings for photography stuff ended up being for, for me being the face. And I was like, whoa, whoa, this is different. What's going on here? It was all new to me at that point, right? And on top of that, uh, because of the previous year with the whole Ghana thing, they were so grateful of what I did that and the money that I donated, um, that they were able, that they invited me to Ghana to stay at the chief's palace, to stay there, to talk to the elders, to give a whole speech to the kids. I mean, it was it was wild, like stuff that you wouldn't expect, and you know that was really incredible time, like of of change and growth. And I remember I was in Europe for Fashion Week when the pandemic started, and during this time, I had just had a meeting with a big agency for that they wanted to sign me as a talent so not a model not a photographer just kind of like a figure you know like an like an image like and they were like we really want you but you, we want you to have more more followers first so i was like bro like why don't you just take me on now and it'll help me grow faster basically like a week later a month later i had a meeting with elite's new digital division digital and culture division and they and they signed me um and i and this was i got signed like the month before the pandemic started but basically in my meeting they were like dude you gotta start using tiktok to grow your following because tiktok's really the only way nowadays to grow during that time right and i was like yo when i give my word i give it and i'm gonna do it that same day they were like at least post one tiktok a day right same day i left i was, I was like i'm gonna do it I bought a ring light and I got to it immediately. Start posting every day, start posting every day. I didn't really get it at first. Um, I didn't know how to turn photography into like videos. So basically, you know, over time, over time, it ended up being my outfits, what I was wearing, the people I was interacting with, my friends. I was living with three of my friends at the time in, my, in the house I had at the time and it took off. It went to like, I think at the most I've had is like 175 or so K followers. Uh, maybe even a bit more and it was really cool because the thing is during the pandemic nobody was shooting so it was a perfect time to do all that during the pandemic i also did something very cool uh which basically i was like dude i'm gonna buy a car 
and to turn the back seat into a bed and set up. So that's what I did. I went down to Florida. I bought a car, Honda Element, and <laughs> yeah, you know, Honda Element, and I, uh, I, with my uncle's help, I built a bed in the back, took the seats out, whatever, and I took off Florida, California, up to Oregon, back to New York, and two weeks later, I sold it. During the time, I was also like. Because of all the outfits and clothes on TikTok and everything, I was like having closet sales to like make money and like I had a little like I had a little uh, like pop up vintage store in like East Williamsburg. It's so weird, dude. It's so weird how our generation like like it's such a weird like two years that I mean for photographers and stuff like nobody was shooting for like a year and a half, two years, dude. Like pretty crazy. And I didn't have other because nowadays the thing is like creating all these videos and stuff like. It's not as easy if you're working, you know? But back then there was nothing else going on. So that led into like other opportunities, which were fantastic. Uh, but at a certain point when the pandemic was lifting and all that, I was like, dude, I gotta like figure it out, get it together, go back to my, like what, like what I'm doing. I can't be like spending all this time, like the outfits, everything is cool, but like this is all supposed to be like, like an extra bonus on top of my photography. It's supposed to be like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll do something cool. It's like, oh, he's a cool photographer who like has a cool look, whatever. But as a photographer, I work with a cool brand, but I'll also be like, oh yeah, I'm in now to talk to them. as like, yo, let's uh, like, let me shoot something for you guys too. You know, like a bonus, like uh, to help me progress my main thing, my photography. It was hard for me at the time. I was struggling a bit to find that balance where like, you know, how do I appeal to both audiences and how do I not confuse people so they know? Cause I was like, some people are like, oh, he's doing photography. And I'm like, bro, what? Like in my head, I'm like, how are they still wondering if I'm doing photography? Photography is my main thing. Like I have, but I have to post myself because these partnerships are paying well and I don't want to lose that either. So that went on for a while where I felt like I was kind of like in a weird situation where I didn't know exactly what the best route was because obviously photography is, is what I am, but I didn't want to lose these partnerships either. And, and it was so much easier to grow posting my outfits and stuff even on TikTok right now, I'll post my photography and it'll be like people like that are huge and they don't do that well, but I'll post my outfits or doing something, you know, whatever, it takes five seconds and they'll do, they'll do well. But even throughout that time, you know, I was, I was working on cool projects. I did a feed magazine with, with, um, with Jari Jones, a friend of mine. I did GQ hype with Eladio. I did Lofi Shell in Mexico city. I did a little Tekka. Um, just a ton of cool projects and like, but but at a certain point again, I was like, dude, like I'm still not, like I gotta like take a seat and make a plan, you know, like get organized. And I feel like in the past two years, I really was able to start, you know, building something. Cause the way I see this before, I used to do a lot of cool projects, right? But it was a little bit like, oh, this is cool. That's cool, you know, but there wasn't an order. Uh, there wasn't really a, I needed to really make a plan and get more organized and what I wanted, what direction I wanted, what I wanted to see myself in the future, like my whole life, not just like my jobs, like everything. And I'm, I'm not trying to have kids tomorrow morning, but younger, I mean, sooner than later. Right. And you know, you gotta get, you gotta get situated and plan for, I always plan ahead versus like getting hit by surprise. Right. So I started thinking, where do I want to be? You know, how do I want to be living? And basically, you know, I took a seat. I started organizing myself, looking over my work, pitching, DMing, submitting, messaging. I'm like, I need to get steady clients. It can't just be job to job. Cool things here, cool things there. What needs to be done needs to be done. And I really did that. I started doing that. I started being more smart uh, about, about what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. Uh, living more true to the life that I wanted to be and envision myself in the next five years or so five to ten years i in the past year really started taking youtube seriously to, to free up you know the one of the main reasons i use youtube is because dude like to be honest between you and i i don't want to live in new york forever i'm not like a city kid like that obviously you know maybe i have to live somewhere i'm close to cities to do the jobs that i do but i don't want to live in new york forever especially not this new york city you know what I'm saying? some people love it not this guy especially not the summers but maybe europe and, and of course not everything is like perfect to plan. I don't have all the answers, everything figured out yet. But looking back on when I first got here to now, you know, I'm sitting in my two bedroom apartment that I, that I moved into that I didn't need a guarantor to get into. I mean, I just had an incredible ending to this 2023 year. 
I mean, dude, I, 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 I just shot the whole Prada campaign. I had my work on a Times Square billboard. I have a whole team now that I work with. It's not just me showing up with a camera and a couple of lights. Like, I have a whole team that I have at every job. I went on to have my fifth annual charity showcase this year for scoliosis and I'm, I'm transitioning into like the next phase of my work with scoliosis right now figuring out what that's gonna be i'm much more aligned with what i'm doing you know every piece might not be there yet in the puzzle but at least i know that every piece is in the box now and i'm building working on now putting all these things together and continuing to grow and a lot of times i didn't give myself the chance to really celebrate those wins because i was such in like survival mode as always next 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 and I'm kind of giving you a synopsis of the story right now, but I mean, dude, there's been some crazy stories along the way. Crazy. I've been threatened to get sued for my scoliosis work. I've been attacked, um, like, like physically. Everything you can think of, dude, like, and at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's what they say, right? What matters is how many times you fall and continue to get up. And eventually, you're gonna be the last one standing. <laughs> nah, you feel me? But, not for real, but, you know, even when I was living in Brownsville, dude, it was crazy, cause, you know, homeboy who I was staying with is my friend now, you know, what's it called? He, he that, that his name's Cameron Johnson, and if you don't know, is before he was like a big actor or anything, he was studying to get his role in A Star Is Born when I was staying with him. I remember him reading his lines in his bed and then he got the role and then he was the big role in Batman and all this stuff. You know, and I'm super appreciative of these of these brands that have supported me. Dude, last year, I think, or 2022, I shot like 10 covers or more. I began furnishing my home this year in the past couple months. It used to be an empty space. And these things sound dumb, but like, in my growth as a, as a human and a person, it's huge. You know, can't prove to somebody I'm ready to be a husband or raise our kids. If you know we're living in an empty space with no no furniture, I have a vacuum, a magnificent vacuum now. I got signed like right like but like right when the year was ending to like the agency that I've been building a relationship with for like two years to get signed to. Sometimes it's easy, especially when you're working with peers who are doing such cool projects and like super millionaires and all these things and billionaires even that you just start feeling like dang. You know, I'm not doing that much. I'm not doing that as, as crazy as them, all this stuff. But like, but, but, but like I have. And I, it's important to remember, you know, so I say it's, not, it's important not to compare. And if anything, like I've said in other videos, I mean, this is a long-term career and I'm just getting started. And there's so much room to grow from here on now, especially now. Before it was different. Now there's no limit because I'm really like organizing myself and building more of a longevity of my life, not just my career. And yeah, partnerships have been a little bit slow lately, but I guess the economy hasn't been that great either. And as long as you're doing your best and, and making good work, then these things will matter because they'll come in time, they'll grow. As this channel grows, other socials will grow. As, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, this thing, this YouTube is something I definitely am happy that I want to continue nurturing and I'm happy to, to, to grow with and bring in with me to this new year and the following years. I'm actually part of the, I actually am part of the, the shorts creator program. I gotta get better at making shorts. That's why I've been uploading these like, kind of, you know, kind of, kind of weird shorts lately, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? But at this point, I'm running out of spit in my mouth from talking so much, from talking your ear off. I think I'm gonna go sit in silence for the next half a day <laughs> from talking so much right now <laughs> i'm dead but thank you for watching let me know i talked about a lot dude let me know what you think let me know like if you want me to tell some of these crazy stories because i had crazy stories about my experience in this industry and getting here and stuff i've heard and seen and experienced myself and lived through um it's just, like crazy anyways y'all thanks for watching have a lovely day um hit the subscribe. I think you'll really like this next video and I'll see y'all in the next episode. Have a lovely day. Bye.